Linda, we don't see you either. What'd you say? We don't see you either. You don't? How, how do I make myself seen? Um, what am I supposed to click on? Do you know where I go to click on it? Are you on a computer or are you on your iMac? Or iPad? I'm, not, I'm on my computer. Okay, my... down in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a mute and you'll see a probably start a start video? video button. So the start video button? Yep. Okay. There I am. <laughs> I thought this was a video, so I didn't understand. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we'll get the meeting started. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. And do you want me to read the land acknowledgement or would someone else want to take a chance doing that? No, I'll do it. Okay. So we would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging that the town of Shelburne resides within the traditional ter territory and ancestral lands of the Ashinabi, including the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, I always have a problem with that. Chippewa and the people of the Three Fires Confederacy. These traditions, these traditional territories upon which we live, work, and play and learn are steeped in rich, uh, where's the rest of it okay. Indigenous history and traditions. It is with this statement that we declare to honor and respect the past and present connection of Indigenous peoples with this land, its waterways, and resources. We encourage residents to review the call to action information by, by visiting the following website to further research and educate oneself. And then websites there. So um, the next item would be the disclosure of pecuniary interest. So does anybody tonight have any? If none, then that's fine. Go on to the next um, item. Oh, that's, let me see where I'm at here. So uh, we have adoption of the previous um, meetings, and it's not the last one, but the previous, because we didn't have quorum last time. So does anybody have any questions or comments about that? And if not, could I get a call for someone to move acceptance of the minutes if there's no issues? Linda, I have a question. Sure. Um, in the minutes, uh, were in last meetings minutes included as well, or no? Do they we didn't not have get an official meeting. That's why. Okay, got it, got yeah. it. So all we have is the previous one where everybody was um, in attendance, so that would be the reason for that. <laughs> so, anybody have any questions regarding the minutes of the previous meeting? No, I missed the previous meeting. I just just add uh, one sort of an idea about art and culture, about the high tea. I hope that it, we can discuss that under new business. I don't know if that's an agenda yeah, or not. We can talk about that later, yeah. So right Perfect. now we just need someone to move and second the um, approval of the previous meet, meeting minutes of May the 9th. Okay, so. Can uh, so I get I somebody know. to move that? Um, I can move it because I was not there, so that's why I was not <laughs> hesitant to move. So, but, okay. But if, if okay. that's okay, I can move it. And who would like to second that? Lindsay, okay, thank you. So all in favor? Okay, and that's passed. So moving on to um, number three. And where's the next? So I have to excuse me for a minute. I think I have the minutes from the previous meeting, but not today's agenda. Here it is. So we have on item number four is a general information discussion um, of items. Uh, so the first one being an update on the working discussions of the June 7th meeting with the guy that you know, made the presentation regarding the murals that he does. Um, Lindy, did you wanna make some comments about that? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I guess personally, I just felt it was um, pretty awesome um you know he seemed really confident in his abilities and um i guess you could say even in the um longevity of the materials that he was using as well um because we did ask him you know um about certain things like uh 
you know, snow being up against the building and, and, and whatnot. And, and uh, he said a lot of his murals that he's done already have uh, standed the test of time so far. Um, he does include with his um, contract, I guess you could say, uh, touch-ups. So if something does happen or there is uh, some paint wear or whatnot, um, you know, he will come back and, and uh, fix that up. The The only thing I was a little concerned with, but I mean, I guess not really, because um, he did say he would work with us, but um, all... I know what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, like the design aspect is yeah. is pretty oh, much... I want, no, I want no one to tell yeah. me how to do this. I'm going to do it myself. Uh, yeah, I get right? it in a way because being an artist myself, um, but there's still, when you're doing a job for somebody, there still needs to be some discussion about it. Yes, exactly. If, and, if and there I mean, was something did, that we didn't like or had a major yeah. problem with, we need to be able to speak. Yeah, and and he did say that you know we he wouldn't just uh, kind of design something and put it on the wall. Like we would get a draft, you know, to sort of approve. And if there was something we really didn't like, you know, like his people, <laughs> <laughs> Bella didn't get it. <laughs> right so i'm i'm concerned but not concerned kind of yeah. at the same time uh, with regards to to that aspect um otherwise though i think um it would be really cool i don't he didn't really give us a price per se no. um but you know we move forward with something yeah. it's just choosing um a location that likely either we can get approval for or that we own and mm -hmm. then moving forward with sort of asking how much but um, yeah, those are kind of my idea or my opinions on what we saw. And uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to move forward with something like it. Maybe not as big as some of the other ones he's done, but you know, we start off somewhere maybe small and right. go from there. So um, who else was there that night? Bella, you were there. Do you have something you want to comment on? Cause I know that you wrote a nice uh, review of everything. That's why I didn't submit anything. Cause I thought I can't top this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lindsay basically said it. Um, I just didn't like the people. Um, there is something I want to bring up one day when we're in camera. I don't feel comfortable saying it in public. So um, I'll just remember to say that comment later if we're ever in camera. Okay. I'd like to know when we're going to be in live together. <laughs> but that's another story. Okay. Uh, do you have something to say? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Is it me or someone else? Sorry. What's that? You're talking to me, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, so, uh, so it's going back to Lindsay. So, Lindsay, the pricing which you're looking for is for the mural? Yeah. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Okay, do, do we, okay, that's the pricing and they will do it on, on town's wall? Like, we need to provide them the space to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, we either need approval from someone, you know, privately owned or it needs to be town owned. Okay, and and and, and uh, do we know what we are doing on, as a mural, or we would just let that artist do it, whatever he wants to do? At, we at would just point, yeah, we're just um, yeah. listening to what he has to say and what, what he yeah. does. And so that oh, oh, a totally okay. different type of presentation than what we already have existing downtown. The one mural that we did last year, yeah, yeah, so it's a different kind of take on on having a mural. Yeah. I just just to add to that again maybe right now we're just looking at the pricing um, not design or creative right. thing uh, but again I just wanted you to see we want to give a fresh look of our town yeah. yes I understand those real you know the train and everything that's history but we need to show something present also right uh, what this town is actually hold as an art and culture so diversity and all those stuff and again that's something I think so it's a second phase first phase is which wall and how much is it that's what we need to set first yeah. all right okay. yeah no, i i love your idea though of of being uh maybe a mural that uh depicts now you know exactly. like and and what we're what we're offering now as a town as opposed to looking at the you know historical aspect of it because we do have a couple of murals that already you know speak to that um yeah that's cool i like that idea perfect thank you so that, that's it. That, I just wanted to know. Okay, so we are discussing right now what, sorry, discussing where and how. That's what we are discussing right now. Okay, got it. Yeah, we're sort, sort of not discussing where and now yet. We just basically listen to the presentation. So it's, it's up oh, to the committee okay. to make a decision whether we want to proceed or do we want to ask for more questions or, or just kind of maybe just look at our budget too in terms of what we want to do for over the next four years. 
<clears throat> and see if we have the funds to do any anything more beyond what we've already talked about. But 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 we have the budget, right? We just need to spend this year. Well, we have we have a budget, but it could be gone in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that's what we need to spend this year. It's not carrying over. So, so that? my understanding is that we are not carrying over this year, but to next year. So we need to spend no, so that. We, so we have to decide in that budget for this year, which is a different oh, topic, okay. what Got it. we're going to spend the money on. And it Got could it. be that this mural could be the whole budget or it could be a part of it. We have no idea how much it is. All right. If, okay. I've got it. Sure. I'm not going to spend all the budget on the mural. I can do it for free. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you do it then. <laughs> but that's okay. That's all. That's all good. Okay. Um, Kyle, did you have some comments? Yeah. It's it's more of a question actually. I didn't quite catch what Lindsay was saying. Did, did I hear that he didn't want to have any input from the committee on what the mural? Right. That's right. That would yeah, be. Yeah. It's a little bit of both. Like he he will take some of our our sort of initial ideas, and then he kind of runs it, run with it. Yeah, and he does a design, and then we can tweak it a little bit. Obviously, if we're paying for it and we don't like something, we say no, we don't like that. But it's not like we do the design and then he he just um, recreates it. Um, it and I think it was just like Linda mentioned. It was mainly too because he's an artist and this is sort of a statement of his abilities as well I guess so yeah like I said I was a little concerned but not concerned as well because he did say that we could have a say and tweak it if we need to but ah yeah <laughs> honestly it's a commission piece for me personally um if you're gonna get commissioned you gotta give the client what the client wants so yeah, I, I agree about. Yeah, totally. totally. And I, I think he'd be willing to work with us. I mean, I don't think he was like dead set, like, no, we're, you don't get any opinions. It's just, he. I think he has to sort of say at the beginning, just so we know what we're going into, that, you know, he does like to con sort of, I guess, keep, um, you know, a higher level of that design aspect or, or a, you know, ability to be free with his ideas as well, what, how he interprets what we want right but again like i'm pretty sure he would be open to working like in, in, with us if we, there was something we really didn't like okay any other comments about this alice do you have anything to say <laughs> no opinion okay I'm sorry, I missed the last couple meetings. Um, oh, hi. I, I, in terms of, in terms of art, artistic integrity and control on the on the final product, I strongly agree with Kyle that obviously this is something we're wanting to represent Chalburn, past, present, and future, or whatever. Um, that we, they're, they're obviously you know we want input input from the artist and we want to, them to be able to express themselves. But um, we I think I think we should as a committee as a town have final say and have quite a bit of input um, in terms of you know, what the content looks like. Um, I know Bella and I have had experience working with artists doing public. We did like, there's a, um, uh, a sculpture that was done in Brampton and it was, it went months and months and back and forth. And yeah, it's really important to pick the right artist because it can get quite messy otherwise. Um, so I don't, I haven't seen the presentation, but from what I'm hearing from you guys just now, um, yeah, that, that certainly would be a red flag if the artist is not easy to work with. Okay, <clears throat> so is there anything that we want to do about this, or do we want to pass a motion, or do we want to just kind of receive it as information? Um, I I would probably just receive it as information, maybe right now. Okay. And so then... do you make that motion? Yeah, sure, sure. So Lindsay is making that motion, and then Bella. Um. Before she makes that motion, I do want to go ahead with something like this, but I just would want to see a draft sketch from him. And and I do want to beautify a town, but I just don't want it to look like graffiti. That's all. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so then So if we receive it for information, we that doesn't mean that we can't invite him back and then yeah. tell him exactly what we've had a chance to discuss this and this is what we think we'd like to mm -hmm. see happen and what are your thoughts and blah blah blah. Yeah, that's true too. That's true. Okay, so can I get uh, somebody to second the motion? 
receive it as oh. information. So, sorry, Linda, oh, sorry. Um, I forgot to say something. And sure. since they would be paying someone, I did see Austin's paintings before um, at the Duffer Muslim Center. He has this huge yeah. painting, beautiful. I'd love to see different uh, others, others bidding for whatever town wall we have paint, mm -hmm. painted. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, my, obviously, my preference, and I don't again, if you guys discussed this before, would be a local artist, preferably, right? Like somebody from Shelburne, yeah. if possible. Not everybody can do that because even even though no, for sure. I um, mean, yeah, I can yeah. paint, but I would never do a mural because it's <laughs> sure. not my area of expertise. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's very different to do a mural, and like Lindsay mentioned, I think it was Lindsay mentioned, you know, the the the, the style of a mural because it, it's outside, it's uh, you know, in, in face of the elements, especially here in Shelburne, the heat and the cold that we get here, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's very different to paint a large surface that's outside and it has to, you know, represent the community. It's very, very different than painting, you know, something like what our daughter does and, you know, little paintings that we have up here and yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, no, for sure. I, I agree. I'm just, I'm just, I think it'd be nice to have somebody from Shelburne if we could, or maybe at least Dufferin then, and then, you know, if we have to widen it, we widen it. Okay. So at that point, um, like Alice, would we put an RFP out, like through the town, to try and get maybe more people bidding on something like this, or more? I just don't. I I think mural painters are hard to find. I don't think they're like a dime a dozen type thing. But I, but I could be wrong. So that's why I'm just like, how could we get maybe more people who might be interested? Yeah. No. For sure. <laughs> May I respond that? to that, Linda? Yes, sure. So yeah, the the presentation that came the previous meeting, that artist reached out to the town. Right. Um, so I would agree with the comments that I've heard that at this point, the committee just received the presentation as information. And then I would agree with the suggestion that the committee look into other um, potential artists and have them make a presentation or a proposal or something as well in the committee and can choose if they go forward with the mural they have multiple artists to consider right um but yes you should receive the presentation received last month at least for information right because in theory like you could have let's say whomever that person may be several people in the artist community who don't do murals but could do a um a drawing with and color it exactly how it should look and then say and then we decide to pick one of them and we like it and then we then commission somebody to do it those are things that are possible i'm sure yeah, that's a idea, Linda. so you know, have somebody designed and then somebody else actually paint it yeah or work together have multiple you can have multiple artists working together right. yeah. any other comments about this so do we have a secondary yet with motion to receive as information? I'll second it. <laughs> okay, good. All in favor? And that's carried. Thanks. Okay. Um, let me see now. Okay. Sorry, Linda, can I just interrupt for one second? Sure. Alex, are you trying to join again on another device? So I can my cell phone because it was faster. I'd like to be on my laptop. That's okay, Alex. Yeah, that's me. Twice. Okay. Okay, I'll flip you in. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, and it's not it's not some hacker named Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Time to double check. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so item four B is the um, um, keychains. Mm -hmm. Who wants to talk about that? Um, I guess I can kind of start. Um, so I think what we kind of need to do tonight is just sort of decide on. Um, how it will look. And then um, I can hopefully get Kyle um, maybe to have a quick chat with Len, just so you guys can figure out the design aspect of it. Um, I've already kind of told Len the size and um, I picked a, it's, I think it was called, oh crap, uh, Imperial Blue maybe. Um, it was the closest blue I could find to the logo. Um, and they don't give you multiples. It's, it's, it's just generally like um, two colors, right? So um, it came with, I think it was, it was like a blue and then I think a gray. So there was no like 
option for like blue on blue and there was no like blue white it was sort of like blue gray and i was like okay i guess that's what we gotta kind of gotta go with um but um i think yeah so tonight if we can sort of hone down how we want it to look and what we want it to say, then Kyle can start working on sort of a design with um, with Len, and then we can try and get some printed maybe for the fall, like for example, even the fall fair, if, if we could, you know, have them ready for, you know, the middle of September. Um, mm -hmm. Then if, if we wanted to, we could set up a small booth at the fair and, um, you know, even if it's only a couple hours, you know, um, I'm gonna be at the fair already. So I may be able to run the booth for a couple hours, um, but I'm usually everywhere <laughs> during the fair. So, um, but, and like I said, just at that point, we can have maybe the walking brochure or the back lane brochure, if, if that's sort of ready. Um, and, and just, you know, the key tags and, and or keychains, and then just sort of explain to people, you know, that what we're here for, right? And, um, you know, spread the word. So yeah, if we can, try and hone that down tonight that would be oh, awesome yeah. that gives a couple of a couple of months maybe yeah. where len can get something printed can i ask a question regarding the colors um does it have to be colors especially if we can't match them can it not be metallic like yeah. silver and bronze mixed together or something yeah 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 we can we can do something like that painted? I'm, tr I'm trying to think um he sent me a couple of links, which I don't know if I sent to you guys or not, um, which shows uh, the options, I guess, for color. Um, like what we did for the street festival was was this, right? So it's black and like a gold. Yeah, so, so you can do something kinda, like that. Like, yeah, that so it sort sense. of looks, you know, and it's just kind of just, you know, sort of basic, I guess you could say, but, um, you know, still looks really nice. Right. So we could do something like that as well. Um, if you if we're like, OK, because we can't do blue on blue, then we'll just go with something like completely different. And, you know, that would be fine, too. So, um, yeah, we can we can hone down that as well. If, if you know, want, so I can have a quick look and see uh, in my email. I'm just trying to see. If, I'll look while you guys chat a bit just to see if I can pull it up and see what colors. Sure. Uh, Kyle, did you want to say something? Yeah, one thing that when we're thinking about what we want these things to look like, keep in mind the size that we're dealing with. And if you take a look at the street festival, I know that it's in the agenda package. Uh, you can take a look and see that logo itself. Because of how small it is, we've got to be very, very careful on what we choose for mm -hmm. the designs. Mm -hmm. Because if we're trying to put that town logo in on something that small, for this kind of an application, it will not come out. Yeah, I agree with you. Way too intricate, way too detailed, and it'll be way too small for what they use in order to produce the design. So, so for example, you could do the logo, but just do it as a like say silver and bronze or something. I'm just giving you an example of what I'm talking. Yeah, about. I know. Does that make any uh, sense or not? Or, or well, it... because of the size of it and the intricacy <clears throat> of the logo itself, I'm I'm thinking specifically <laughs> about that building. There's a lot. Of very fine lines yeah. when it reduces down to that small i don't believe that it can get that detail so what would you suggest to be on the keychain i don't think i think first and foremost we need to not have any idea of having the town logo on there i don't okay. think it's possible yeah. i think if we go along with the heritage plaque look we could certainly do mm -hmm. something across the top something at the bottom circa 1884 and blow up that circa 1884 i think would look yeah. nice Give yeah, it that same, would make sense. same sort of feel. Mm -hmm. But I, I think in this case here, simple is actually going to be better. Yeah, I have to agree because a lot of stuff, no matter what we do, so the less we make of it and still have it look heritage looking. So if it's kind of duplicating a, a plaque, then that makes logical sense. We're just to um, clarify. So the logo we're talking about is the, the one with the like the town hall with the wind and the clouds yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, is there, I agree with what you're saying, Kyle, but is there a way to take that logo and maybe simplify it? Like remove a lot of the, I mean, the building itself is the problem. The clouds and the, and the wind are fine, but if we simplify the building a little bit. The wind blew that the building away. Not, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause there's literally, you're right. There's like probably like, I don't know, 10, 12 windows and a lot yeah, of like little yeah, smaller ones. 
I, I know I know what you're saying, but realistically, for the size of what it's going to be, the only yeah. way that could work is if that building was just a solid block, and then you wouldn't I have to pay what you're looking at. Yeah. Or right. do we have another logo that represents Shelburne? Like, is there another image or another something that's like Shelburne? Well, well Kyle was referencing the the plaques that we've done in the past. Oh yeah. yeah okay. So that that to me would, would make simple sense, and and it's easy to read and. Not yeah. hard to duplicate. Like the heritage plaques around town. Those ones yeah, like that, that comes down. Okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, we have a decent amount of detail in the street festival ones, but I think it's because that those images are bigger. You know what I mean? Like they take up a lot more of um the surface than if we one hundred percent just sort of copied the plaque that's in the agenda that little logo would be considerably smaller on the bottom, right? Because yeah. we want to bring 1884, basically like if you're looking at like here, right? So the where these are is where we're going to probably put like 1884, mm -hmm. right? So it's going to take up that big space. Right. And then below it, you'd have this itty bitty tiny circle <laughs> block. <laughs> so I think, I think we're right. Um, unfortunately, as much as it sucks, um, because we are going to go with something about this size, right? When you're looking at your finger, um, it it wouldn't make sense, unfortunately, to put the, the logo in as much as I hate that because I would love to have the logo. Um, but I think Kyle's right. I think if we if we did something like, you know, I, I mean, again, just because this was supposed to be more heritage related, if we just leave it with where it says Heritage Shelburne and then you know, we, we drop the circa down a little bit, make that a bit bigger. And then 1884 takes over the rest of the space below circa. Yeah. And that's it. That's what we do. I think that's the best option. Yeah. Right. And then that way, um, it still looks like the plaque. It's just where we just had to leave the We're logo. Promoting it. Yeah. Basically yeah. yeah. So is everybody of the same opinion? Should we vote on that option or what are your comments? Anybody else have anything to say? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say, yeah, we're talking about design, adjusting the logo and everything. Why not, do we have a 3D model or, 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 or a sort of a sketch of the plaque which we are, or keychain which we are doing? I'm sure there should be a prototype somewhere like in a yeah. document. So if we have that, if we can share that thing in the committee, we'll, we can approve it and we can go from there. Okay, Alice, can you ask uh, Jennifer? I know she has it somewhere. <laughs> the plaque or the former keychain? Which one are you oh, asking? The plaque. Both, both, both. Right. Your image, the image of the plaque. An image of the plaque. Right, so we know what we Yeah, the image of the plaque is in the agenda. Oh, it is. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not see it, so I'm apologizing. Oh, I didn't either. Yeah, yeah. But I know Lindsay was explaining it. <laughs> in detail. Yeah, it looks like. I, just, I, I, I don't know. know. I can't. Where's my camera? I don't know if it I can is. bring it up. Yeah. See, see how it looks like that. Yeah. Right. That's so the key, the, the keychain, the keychain would look like that, except we wouldn't have the logo. Um, it would just be the 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 writing, and then where the logo sits on that plaque is, we'd have eighteen eighty four. So it'd be a little bit bigger. We drop circa down a little bit and make that a bit bigger. And then 1884, because that's the, the year um, the town was, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm assuming, what is no, that year? It, it was a particular, <laughs> I don't know what that year building. is. <laughs> or how funny. I think Alice has the answer. Alice has the answer. <laughs> that 1884 is a house number. Yeah. It was, the house is 1884. That's why the plaque says 1884. Okay. The town, the town was incorporated in 1971. Big difference. Okay. So, and that's the number we would want is whatever the yes. town was incorporated. Or yes. is there an older number from when the town was taken from a village to a town? Or is that the incorporation number? Like, is that the year? I would say it's the year is 1971. I can okay. see if I can get further, but that when I previously asked when the town was incorporated, that is the year that I was incorporated given. is one thing, but as a town existing, it, it existed before that. Exactly. So, so I and I can't I remember the year. Was, I, I did know it, but I don't know. 
Yeah. yeah, I was hoping more for the year the town was actually yeah. identified as a town, right? Like yeah. Shelburne, the town. That was the year I was hoping for that we would put instead of 1884, because that's exactly what I thought was just the whatever house but that these go on, it's the year that house was built, right? That's what that number should be. But yeah, if we can find out which, I don't know if I can put a call into MOD um, to the archives and just see if someone might have that information readily available. Um, but that would be the number I kind of would love to see there, would be whatever, whenever we actually became known as the town of Shelburne. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so 1884, that's, I mean, that's not the final number, it's just for- No, design. no, Got yeah, that's just, that's just to give us sort of a visual. Got it. Okay, so so the the, the the plaque which you just showed, so what? So you're saying that it, on a keychain, mm -hmm. we, we cannot do keychain with our Shelburne logo and just put no. whatever the date on top of it. It's just a little too small because yeah, we have a lot of detail in it, our, it, our logo. It, this this is the size of a keychain. If it's round, I, I, why not we just make the whole round our awesome. Shelburne? Awesome. Logo? Yeah, the problem is the way that these are produced. They do not have the DPI to be able to produce the intricate details of that logo. Yeah. So like a blob or just a round dot. Mm -hmm. so, so it's basically all text and no image, right? You know, so, 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 so I challenge that because I designed those things a lot of time. And then and my manufacturer can do that in detail in three. So why it cannot be done exactly in, in I can go with badges and pins as low as I possible. I do this thing for my club. It's it's a different process, Austin. Where we're going, we're getting the things produced with through lead for free. So we have to go with the work on this. Okay. So you're saying that we're gonna miss the logo. We're gonna put just the date of the town and just the wording on it. That's that's what we are going. But we're gonna use yes. the scheme of our town logo, color scheme. Yes, I sent um yeah. Alice, if you look in your email, um I sent you the links to both of the colored palettes, yeah. I guess. Okay. Maybe That's if you right. can bring, okay. if you can screen share that. And then they, the committee can see the options that we have. I hope it works. Fair, fair enough. I think so. I just was looking for explanation, but I think so. I got the idea what, what we are doing. But, but yeah, that's okay. and, and it's because it's a, um, it's oh, yeah. like, a, it's a laser process, but it's like a CNC machine kind of thing. It's so it, I don't think it's as high tech as some of the options out there, right? Because we're doing it through the school, we're going to kind of get a deal. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, if we're yeah. getting a deal, and, 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 and clear me up, Kyle, you say it's for free? That's what you're saying? My understanding we'll to, that land is offered to produce these for us, yes. Yeah, God. yeah. Okay. we'll have to pay for the material, but that that's about it. It'll, it'll be material. Fair enough, okay. So I got the idea what you guys are doing. I got the idea. I just thought that maybe we can somehow incorporate the logo, or at least we can use the color scheme which you guys just shown. So that will because something if I'm carrying with myself, that I'm 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 looking like I put in my car keys, so I can see mm -hmm. like people would put an eye on it. So it's a shelter, mm -hmm. uh, not just look like a dog tag or something. But I don't want that. Like no, yeah. That, that, that's what exactly I was going with. But, but again, if uh, if the design is uh, going with the scheme, and we know we have less options, but I'm, 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 I'm okay with it. So these these are kind of the options that we can choose from um, for, for the color. So like I said, I'm, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's like a blue on blue. But if you guys, you know, kind of have a look here and, and just sort of see which one sort of jumps out at you the most and then we can just uh, let Len know that, um, you know, we want to go with that color in, instead, so. If we're going to mimic the plaques, because the mm -hmm. idea is to promote the, the plaques, correct? For the heritage plaques? Mm -hmm. So for me personally, I would suggest that we go for something that actually mimics those plaques as much as possible. So I'm kind of leaning towards the black being the foreground and like a okay. silver we've got. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I I agree. Or like you said, a silver or a gray, depending on, um, you know, what they might have. Um, so I'm assuming let's just look and see. So it'd probably be like black and silver. 
Um, there's a, uh, yeah, those are all light grays and black. Yeah, so if you scroll down a little bit there, Alice, just to where the blacks are. So we've got black and white, black and silver, black and gold, gloss black and white, and gloss black and gold. So more than likely, I'm assuming we would go with like a black and silver. And that's how our black is? The, the, yes. We are going to mimic that? Okay. Yeah, it's like a black granite. And then so when the laser inscribes onto it, you get that, um, that gray stone look. Got it. Okay. where the engraving is so so we are mimicking that okay then, then yeah. it's fine if, if it's okay so yeah. sorry alice um if you scroll can you scroll quickly kind of well not too quickly but up and down just in terms of the backgrounds then it's really like gray black white um there's the harbor gray one and that's not dark enough right kind of the one the one that has an interesting texture to go down a little bit yeah is that okay, that's yeah. not that's not enough like the back like the black right um, it's white instead of silver. Is that a texture? I still yeah. like it. Is, is, is that too busy? Well, I'm, I'm just curious. Is it, If it's textured and it makes it look more like a stone, I, I do kind of like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like it too. Yeah, I don't know if it's textured. It may just have the look like almost like a faux stone. You know what I mean? So like it won't be actually, you know, physical textured. But I mean, but it could be. We don't know. Like. No, I no, that's, I, I think you're misunderstanding there, uh, Lindsay. I'm, I'm just asking, is it textured as in visually textured? Is it, is it yeah, got yeah. gradients throughout it like what we see here? Because if right. that's the case, that kind of mimics stone a little bit better. Yeah. I, I do kind of it's like more that. interesting, right, than just black yeah. Yeah. or yep. gray or whatever. Right. I mean, yeah. I like and, the one I mean, right next to it, too. But <laughs> It kind of looks like it would, right? Like if we're looking at it, it kind of looks like it would have some form <laughs> of visual texture. Mm -hmm. So could we, could we get um maybe get you or Kyle to just check with Len and just get back to us on it? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Well, like so, what I would say is let's let's pick the sort of the color scheme. Yeah, the one we like. Yeah. yeah. So like, let's say like I'll ask him like, hey, does this Harbor Gray kind of have a visual texture look? And if he says yes, then that's the one we go with. Yeah, and if he right. says no, then let's have our backup so I can yeah, say, okay, sure. then fine, we'll go with this or whatever. So we don't have to wait until next month okay. again right. to, you know, so make a decision. Right? Like I can always be... send it out via email as well, of course. So which one would we like to be the second alternative if that is not the case? Maybe, I mean, as much as it kind of sucks, but maybe just the black and, and the silver. Mm -hmm. I'll go with the harbor gray and the white first. Black and silver or black and gold, I think would look nice. I, I know yeah, that yeah. blacks are, are black and silver, but yeah. I think the gold might give it. Now, is the gold the flat gold like we had for the yeah. uh, Street Fest? Oh, yeah. okay, so it's not an actual gold, it's a gold color. It's kind of a, yeah, yeah, it's sort of a, yeah, yeah it's hard to describe because it's, it's gold, but not really. Like, it's not gold as you would see um, gold, you it's know, normally depicted. It's, it's not reflective. No, it's it's more of a flat, like okay. a, a matte. Well, if, that, if that's the case, then I would lean towards the black and silver as the alternative. Okay. okay. Does everybody else right. have the same opinion, or anybody else got different comments? I mean, I like pink, but I'll go with black and silver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I will send a, a quick message off to Len when we're done uh, tonight with just the sort of the question of the Harbor Gray. Um, and then um, if he's not 100% sure, do we want to just go with it and try the Harbor Gray? Fingers crossed. Or would we prefer, because we don't know 100% the answer, we just go with the black and silver? Well, I guess my question is, is it going to hold up anything? Like, how, how soon do we need this? So okay. maybe Alice, you can answer this question for me. Could we as a committee make the decision to pull the trigger on doing these things, but could we still have discussions through email to make a final decision on colors? Yes. Okay. So why okay. don't we do that? If, if we do that, then I'll connect with Len and see if I can get a sample of this Harbor Gray. Yep. Mm -hmm. Actually send that out by email so everybody can see it. Get a sample of the Harbor Gray and get a sample of the black and silver if that's the option number two 
I'll get pictures of those and send those to the entire committee that we can then decide yeah. in email so things aren't held up. Yeah, that's good. I think that's better. I and if, at the same time, if I'm understanding where we want to go with this, do you guys want me to get that simple design done up and send that in the same email as well? Yes, please. Okay, can do. I know Len did mention that he might have to speak with you a little bit just because, um, which I'm sure you already know because you designed the one for the street festival. So, um, but there's something about cut lines. So I guess there's your basic kind of design, but then that, that design sort of needs to be um, tweaked, I guess, a bit because of it's the way that the laser it. works or the way the- yeah, that's, that's the whole reason I brought up the town logo. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, okay. I figured I figured you and him would sort of talk about that because that's all mumbo jumbo to me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, Kyle's got this. I'm okay. I don't care. <laughs> Once we decide on what we want it to kind of look like, Kyle's got this. I'm not worried. <laughs> okay. okay so, all right. so I think we're done with the discussion about uh, item B. So we just we need to, to make a motion though, Linda, to Oh, I thought we didn't we weren't gonna make a motion. Yeah, yeah, we, we still have to make a motion to, um, I guess, accept those two color options. Okay, yeah. And you make that motion, um, then? actually, and then further communicate with email. We don't have to choose the colors. We just have to make a motion to proceed with doing oh. the right. Okay. Right. And, okay. and the quantity. Yes. And oh, right. you're, not, you're not making any decisions via email. Right. Okay. You're right. confirming a decision that the committee is already making. You're not right. making any decisions via email. Right. So okay. the, de the decision needs to be made in the motion mm -hmm. as detailed as possible, please. So we that need to have we need to have budget allocated for number of keychains and colors to be determined could be part of that motion. Yeah. So it'll be either these colors or these colors in the motion okay sure. please but okay. but we will get that numbers whatever the labor amount we are charging or material amount we are charging that that will come on in email first or we, we know those numbers we have we have to decide what we're budgeting for the keychains here and we have to all what we have to vote on do we want to spend x for mm -hmm. got it. keychains got it okay yeah, yeah. So are we going to include all of that in the same um, motion or two separate motions? Oh, we're talking about, numbers. <laughs> we're well, talking actually, about numbers. We're talking about numbers. Do we know the number? The cost? We couldn't figure out the cost until we picked the um, the size, which I did end up sending. I just copied the size of the one from the street festival mm -hmm. and the colors. So until we've honed down sort of the color, because I think that might make a difference. Okay, so maybe um, you could put in the motion, and then once we do this, then we will request a, a, a price on, so the, yeah. on yeah. the final decision. That is yeah. good. Then we, then we might as well wait until next month for everything, because we have to make yeah. the decision on the budget. Okay. Or if, Lindsay, do you have a rough idea on what material is going to cost? He, he didn't really say. So, I mean, the only other thing I can say as well is we can allocate a certain amount and that just gets us the quantity it gets us. So that that's kind of an option as well, right? I know what I'd recommend for tonight. Uh, Alice got her hand up. Sorry, just um, keeping in mind that there is no committee meeting in August. So the next committee meeting would be September, which would be too late for yeah. the... Um, but the other option that you have, um, you could form a subcommittee of a maximum of three members and give the subcommittee the authority to finalize the decision and quantity for the design of the keychains up to X amount of dollars. Okay. okay. And then the committee could make the decision and the committee could report back at the next meeting what the final design was, what the final colors was, what the final cost was and if they need to go over that then they can't go over that dollar amount until the next committee meeting but it gives them the authority to make the decision um so that you could potentially still have them in time for the fall fair alice could subcommittee be made up of somebody who's not part of this committee yes okay lindsay how would you feel about you len and myself yeah just sure. all the triggering 
go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes yep. sense to me because Len's the one that's involved with it, so why not? Yeah. So yeah, I guess we need to have a motion first to create that subcommittee, Alice. Could I recommend one member of the public on the committee so it's not a complete committee of council members? Just <laughs> right. I was just going to say, I was like, wait oh. a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, uh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't appoint Len to the subcommittee, but obviously we know you're working with Len, yeah. um, but I wouldn't appoint him to the subcommittee. I would suggest the subcommittee be three members of this committee okay, for this purpose. And then that we were not adding a third council member. Very good point. Okay. <laughs> Anybody uh, want to join us for this? So it looks like in the chat, Bella is nominating Alex. <laughs> I second that motion. <laughs> Alex, are you okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> You He's like, I'm voluntold, so I have to be. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. So then, yeah, I guess, Kyle, you can sort of work on a like a quick sort of, like I said, rough design, which we got to find out that number, though, of when the town was identified as a town. So, so I got to get yeah, on so that. What we what need if, tonight from the committee now, if I can just interject, is we need a motion to appoint these three individuals to the subcommittee and give them the authority to design the keychains and spend up to X amount of dollars. Okay. So what do we want to budget for this? Do we have any rough idea what it costs per unit on I, average? I know, I was trying to remember what we yeah, did. I want, to, I want to say the material cost was somewhere between 200 and I don't think it was up as, up as high as five. I don't think it was either. And I think that got us like, I want to say it was 70 something per sheet. And we did like three sheets or, or something of that nature. Like, cause we had a, we had a decent amount of them. Um, and I remember it being like, wow, that's, that's a good number per sheet. Right. And I think it was like 76 per, per sheet. It sounds um, very familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so now with inflation and all that fun stuff, plus we need to make sure we we put in for the actual rings, the key rings, because <laughs> um, those will have to be purchased like through some type of a, of a wholesaler maybe or Amazon as bulk as possible. Um, you got those off of Amazon last time, didn't you? I think I did. It was, yeah, I think it might've been off Amazon in, in sort of like a bulk order. And again, it wasn't expensive. I think I got like a hundred for 20 bucks something in, in that in that range um so i mean yeah if we i i mean i don't want to do a shock and awe but i think if we allocate maybe about a thousand bucks and then you know you don't have to spend it all we, i mean yeah know, like it, it's just budgeting for it and just mm -hmm. up to is what we're, yeah. we're saying um yeah if, yeah exactly. I, I would say if we do the thousand dollars, that would include the rings as well as yeah. material for keychains. That would give us yeah. how many roughly? Um, it's hard. Like I said, it's hard to say. I'm hoping at least like three or four hundred of them. You know, depending. But again, like because I can't one hundred percent remember how many was on per sheet and how much each sheet cost. That's that's kind of our uh, moment right now, right? Because we need to kind of know that number um, guess, and to have an idea. My guesstimation based on the fuzzy memory I have, I think the sheets were about a hundred bucks a piece. Yeah. So if we plan on say 150 or we budget 150 per sheet yep. and then put in, uh, what, was it about another hundred for the rings that you paid somewhere around there? Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't even know if it was that much, to be honest with you. Okay, so, so if, we, if we guesstimate 75 per sheet and we get four sheets, that's going to give us, what is that? That's uh, uh, four. That's that's 300 keychains. Yeah, right, so exactly. If we, so if we budget, uh, what is that, 150 times four. So we budget $600 for the material and then say if you paid if, if we're guessing, oh. guessing what if we say another 200 on top of that for the rings 
Yeah, actually, key rings, guys. Uh, Amazon's choice right now. I get a hundred key rings at twenty five millimeters for twelve ninety nine. Not bad. Okay. So, <laughs> really, the key rings are like in yeah. insignificant. <laughs> so, okay, but, but still, you know what? To give the buffer because we don't know what the material is going to cost. Uh, yeah. What? And I'll just recommend. Why don't we budget eight hundred? That's the max okay. that the committee can spend. Okay, so it's just a budgeted amount, not the actual. Just a budget. Amount. This isn't actually the actual cost. This is just to make sure that we've got buffer room to, to get it done. Fair, fair enough, because in the end, it all depends how much this per kitchen is actually costing, right? right? Because in dollar shop, you can get that kitchen. You know, in Canada, they kitchen is just in a dollar. So if this mm -hmm. kitchen is costing us $2, then I think so Alex needs to raise his eyebrows, right? He so, hey, man, that, why is this expensive? But, but we need to be cognizant about that amount. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, but again, eight hundred dollar I think so I'm, I'm okay with it uh, as a budget, and I'm sure Kyle and Lindsay got it covered. It's just I'm not worried about it. It's it's look good. Uh, do we have, do we need to pass the motion on eight hundred dollar? Just a high level. Yeah. And, That's and part of the motion. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So, Linda, you want to call that motion, or you just need to second it? Well, I'm chairing the motion or the chairing the meeting, so if I can get a mover and seconder, that would be good. Okay, so, so I can okay. second it. Who's moving it? Oh, oh, I'm. Austin will move it and I'll second it. Okay. Oh, yeah, you put my name there. All right, I will move it. <laughs> I just I'm on the subcommittee to both of them. I will move it. Okay. And Kyle, you're seconding it? Okay, all in favor? Okay, that's carried. All right, so next is um, item C, which is. Shelburne Arts and Brews. And Kyle, did you want to talk about that? Um, not really a lot that we can talk about because again, like I said uh, last time that we were talking about this to do, an event like this does take a lot of planning and it's not mm -hmm. something that we want to rush. If we're going to do this, we've got to do it right. Um, if we decide that we do want to go forward and have something like this, we should start planning, I would say now to get mm -hmm. things ready for next year. It's it because if we wait until September, it's it's your your time's gonna run out very, very fast. Okay. Any other comments about it? From anybody else in the committee? Okay. So what do you want to do then, Kyle? Do you wanna get this whole thing started now? Well uh, I've got to ask the committee, is this something that we want to pursue? Why is nobody yeah. asking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's a cool idea, right? I mean, um, I guess it's just sort of figuring out where we go from here, right? And um, If it's something that the committee does want to do, my suggestion would be, first and foremost, pick a date figure out when we want to do it that's going to give us our timelines it's going to let us know our dates on when certain things have to be done leading up to and then include up to and including advertising so we do be looking at next summer early summer late summer fall i would suggest fall fall okay because there i mean the only thing that i can think of in the fall right now is the uh the fall fair is there anything else Lindsay, that's going on <laughs> Roughly around then? I so, so don't think this, so. Yeah, this is the art and beer culture, right? That's the one which you talked yeah. about? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I don't really think there's anything in, in October at all, except for Thanksgiving, for the most part. I was saying, I was. Uh, National Day of Truth and Reconciliation on the September 30th as well. Just keep that in mind, too. Right, right. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes the weather's crappy in October, but if you go earlier October, it's um, maybe not too bad. If we go as far as October, I wouldn't do it past the first week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think September would be the best. I think September would be the yeah. ideal. Now, uh, fall fair is when, Lindsay? Um, second weekend after Labor Day, so it will probably be if there's like September 9th, 17th, we'll oh, 
September 17th next year because it's the 16th this year. September 17th, 2024 is a Tuesday. Okay, so it'll be that's weird. It really jumps. Maybe we're. Really it goes, it, it goes the other way. If it's the 16th, it's, it's the 15th is the Sunday. 2024, February is a leap year. Oh. Next next February is a leap year. Well, that's it. Ah, okay, that's that's why. Because I'm like, uh, that doesn't make any sense. What the hell? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it's the second weekend after Labor Day. So whatever that is. <laughs> so do you want to make a motion to that effect, Kyle? Um, I'm just trying to figure out... Uh, a good date. So if it's a second second weekend after Labor Day, Labor yes. Day is September 1st. Yeah. So we're talking about the fourth Saturday, September 14th, 2024 is what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, no, that's when the fall oh. fair is. We don't want to okay. we don't want to butt up against right. the fall fair and we don't yeah. want to be butting up against the truth and reconciliation. So if the 15th yeah. Well, September 30th, that's that's the Truth and Reconciliation Alice? Yeah, which that's is a Monday. Monday. Okay, so that could be okay. 15th, so if we do it on... Yeah. I, I would say do it on the 28th. Yeah, yeah, because you'd have to, I guess you'd have to go like the 14th or the 28th if you were doing a Saturday. I would suggest for something like this, it should be a Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the fall fair People is fourteenth and fifteenth, is it not? It it would be, I guess, because the it, I'm assuming when's Labor Day then for next year? My stupid calendar is not September second. Okay, September second so is September, Labor Day. Okay, so that's our Labor Day weekend. So one, two, yeah, it should be second weekend after. So it should it should be the fourteenth and fifteenth would be the fall fair. So you'd have to go the 7th or the 28th. I think we're a little bit too close if we could go the 7th. You said the 17th. You mean the 21st and 28th? Oh, yeah. Sorry, the 21st. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think we're a little too close to the fall fair at the 21st. I think the 28th is probably the better choice. Okay. I mean, kind of be cool to like have them both happening on the same day, but I, you don't want to... Not really. Then one's taking... Yeah. Yeah, you know, one, you know, you know, people yeah. from one... To the other you know i mean sometimes it's good to have kind of multiple events happening because it brings everybody out and they're like oh i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna go here and sometimes it's bad because then they just choose one right so uh yeah i mean i personally i'm okay either 21st or the 28th what is yeah. it gonna be? i mean i think, I think that 28 sounds good to me i just i worry that if we do something for you know the reconciliation it it might take place on the 28th instead of the 30th because the 30th is a Monday. Okay. So what, do we know for a fact what day that is, Alice, next next year? Well, it's formally recognized on the 30th. Okay, so then it's not the 28th. So. Okay, so you know what? Give the buffer. Let, let's not encroach on that. I think that's that's actually uh, a good point, Lindsay. Let's, let's leave that one open. Why don't we back it off then to the 21st? Yeah. I think the 21st would be a good idea. Yeah, it's in between the two events. Yeah. yeah. Okay, does somebody want to make that motion that we set that date for the event? Sure, I'll make the motion. Yeah. Okay, Kyle, and seconded by? I can second it if Lindsay. no one else wants to. Okay. Any more discussion? The only thing that I would suggest now that we have the date is for next meeting. Uh, Alice, if you can make a note for kind of a subsection in this one, I'm going to put together a list of things that we'll need to have to plan out just so that we're not flying by the seat of our pants. And we can discuss that at the next meeting in case I miss any. Okay. Okay. So we'll just vote on the motion. All in favor of that date. Okay. That's carried. All right, moving on to um, the next item is the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Committee mandate. Um, committee's role in conjunction with the EDC events. Now, um, I had talked to um, 
I'm just trying to remember now. Uh, I was talking about the EDC having events that they're having in the park and then our events. And I mentioned to Alice, you know, we need to maybe coordinate things or maybe possibly have Carol come to one of our meetings just to see what the process going forward is going to be. Like, I, I know that she put all those things together because there was an election going on in the fall and started work on it. But whether we should do anything else with a hand up? Yeah, if I can just clarify about those yeah. Fridays in the park, that is yeah. not just an EDC economic development. Um, it's actually in partnership with the BIA okay. and um, was meant to take the place of the farmer's market that didn't happen this year. So it's yeah. it's a BIA initiative that the town is promoting through the economic development okay. um, department. So it's okay. not it's not just that economic development was putting on activities in place of a committee. It was okay. in partnership with the BIA, just to make that clarification. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then as far as the mandate, that was just to remind the committee that at some point the mandate needs to be updated because at this point there's still two, one for arts and culture and one for heritage, and it needs to be combined into one. So just that'll be a consistent thing on the agenda until the committee formalizes a new mandate combining them. Okay. How do we do that? Do we have to kind of go over it together and piece things in or do we let town staff kind of put something together and then bring it no, to this us? would be this would be committee committee developed based on the information that's there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So getting back to what I was saying, I, I understand what you're saying, Alice. I guess my question was it's nice for the committee when we're doing our planning to know what everybody else is doing. Because otherwise, they end up crossing paths. Like the day of the one event in the park, there are about three other things going on that same night. So it's not just the arts and culture committee, it's everybody else in town. So that's the only reason I brought that forward. Right. Okay. okay, well, the next item is the afternoon tea event. Is there any update or any comments that Asim wants to make about that? Is he still here? <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> no, no, I just wanted to add in a lot. Explore the idea to it to the committee if they want to do because this is something um, we introduced two years back and as a fundraising event and it becomes sort of a culture. Now, in our afternoon tea events, because it uh, represents a little bit history and culture of British cricket and everything, a lot of people from Toronto came last time, so that in you know boost the economy and you know, I'm not saying a major uh, but but something it's as a culture we can introduce this thing I see a lot of uh, you know high tea afternoon tea events happen in Orangeville in Hockley so I thought that why not we take this opportunity in, in, in Shelburne that hey cricket and tea goes together it's already in our different county magazine that it is that event is happening so Shelburne Cricket Club is hosting if town want to partner with with that, we can make it a bigger event for public to come out and see the new sport. Plus, it will help for park and recreation too. They understand, okay, they're doing cricket because of this. And I'm just just in an email. Again, it's up to you guys. Just let me know if this is something you know town is interested as a heritage and culture and art. We can put some art paintings there. Local artists playing its violin and you know and the tea and our tea is representing diversity is shown different cultures different religion i'm just like it's, it's open to everyone and so where, where would you have that tea located or what were you thinking about we we, we uh, look like normally shelburne cricket club do it in at, at kth park because mm -hmm. cricket is happening here so it's outside you know the, yeah so we, we we are doing it this year anyways on 24th mm -hmm. of august i think so that's yeah. the date we, we have a soccer field around with the KTH park, nobody used that. We can set up stuff there. We have the management, we have everything. And if it's a town come up with the volunteer opportunity, we can make that even bigger. So again, just two cents. 
uh, if, 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 if if this is something committee interested in, hey, can we promote this thing? Maybe not this year, maybe next year. It's just to run an idea. Mm -hmm. so, Would you do something like that in a large tent or something? In case the weather yes. was Yes. Yeah, so, so normally last year when we did it, we, we hosted almost 70 to 80 people, weather permitting, and mm -hmm. it's a dress coded event. So everyone was wearing fascinators, you know, they, you know, guys were wearing fedoras, and and they were having a sort of. There is no alcohol, so what we do, we just put a sort of a non-alcoholic champagne and apple juice and those stuff. Kids are playing popcorns, uh, tea in a beautiful teacups, and watching the cricket match also happening. So it's it's just give a different, fresh look to the town. So that was the idea. But again, if we can use that thing in an art and culture thing. That's what I was just thought that, hey, I can just put that thing on the new business mm -hmm. item if you guys yeah. are okay with the idea or we can Im improvise it. It's not necessarily going to happen, but I'm just keep throwing an idea. I think it's a good idea. I don't know what the rest of the community feels. Any more comments from anybody about that? Is Alex, you're saying something? Yeah, um, I, I really liked it. I mean, the one that we went to last year with, with you guys was really fun. Um, I think there's certainly an, an opportunity to grow it, partner with the town and partner with other organizations um, in Shelburne and around Shelburne. Um, and you know, I've been to afternoon teas and, you know, the Empress in Vancouver and the Royal York downtown. And, and we took my mom, you know, to the Brampton house for, for afternoon tea or high tea. It's, it's really fun. Our real estate agent does it every year for her clients. So um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here. It's it's it's, it's family friendly. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, and and it does. There's, there's definitely a very strong cultural element to it because of the history of Shelburne and the history of Canada, and you know obviously our uh, you know British ancestry has now become global, right? Like the idea of uh, afternoon tea is not just a British thing or a UK thing anymore. It's a you know Canadian thing. It's a you know, wet coast to coast, you know, from St. John's all the way to Victoria, they, they do afternoon tea, uh, high tea. So uh, I, I I think it's a great idea and I would definitely be interested. Well, thank you. And, and then and the thing is that I try to reach out to local business. I reach out to Pizza Hut, for example. I reach out to Barbary, to, uh, you know, Mary Brown's. I reach out to uh, these uh, cafes, uh, bubble tea and those. I say, hey, we are going to do this event. Uh, do you want to be part of it? So it will showcase their you know their products also mm -hmm. there, uh, and 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 we can make this event bigger. So it's a it's a win-win situation for nonprofit organization, businesses, community, and we can have a music. I, I want to just I'm struggling to find a good violinist or pianist or whoever it is. That if I have those and we are playing that music live, and then the event is happening, so we can we can say gated events. Normally, what Shelburne Cricket Club do is that we charge $25 per person just for fundraising for young people who cannot afford to play cricket, buy equipment and stuff. But with this, we can open it to public. We can reduce the cost and then just say, hey, just come out. And we, because all those monies is coming from local business you know, and organizations, then we don't need to charge anyone. Or we can say $2, $2, whatever it is, we can come up to the logistics later. But again, that was the idea. So any, any other comments? Right. I, I think the only thing, um, I, I, like I said, I love it. I just I, like, we just need to have an idea on sort of budget. Um, you know, if we approach uh, the business in town, are they going to sort of sponsor, I guess, a little bit of the event, like some of their products for free so that the community can try it, you know, so that, that affects budget, right? Like whether, okay, because if they're going to give us some stuff as a sort of a sponsorship, then our budget doesn't need to be as high. But if they're not, then we need to budget to pay them to come, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. the first steps, I guess, might be engaging that conversation with some of the, you know, some of the businesses you're thinking of, so that yeah. we have an understanding whether or not we have to pay for their services to come, or they're going to come, you know, as sort of um like a sponsorship, right? And and offer their products to the community. 100%. And, and, and I'm going to just get that confirmation from them because I throw that idea. They were very much interested. Even uh, in the gate on the French restaurant, they do crepes, right? If they can do live crepes for us, then we're going to purchase them. If they don't want to sponsor, right? You just put it there, we will purchase it from you. Yeah. So that's their business thing. 
one thing is for sure, Shabnam Cricket Club gonna host the afternoon tea anyways, right? We are doing that plan. I'm just want to make it bigger as a culture and heritage, and uh, so so we can throw that idea now. Uh, I know Mary Brown will be in. I know Barbarito will be in just to have some bits and pieces. Just need to ask those three or four local business which is related to afternoon tea and snacks. I can ask them if you guys want, and then then we can go from there. Well, that'd be good if you could report back and we have a better idea. Yeah. That would be awesome. And then, like I said, then we kind of have an idea as to, okay, so, you know, we're going to have Mary Brown says they're going to give us, you know, 50 coleslaws or, or something like that. Right. Yeah. Then we kind of yeah. know, okay, you know, if we need to add to that, we need to pay for it. Maybe they'll give it to us at a, you know, reduced price or something of that nature. Um, and then, um, you know, that gives us a, a starting ground as to, okay, what do we need to offer food wise and whatever. And, do, what do we have to pay for or, or whatnot as, as a part of the budget? So yeah, that, would, that would be great. No, okay. If I could just interject, Bella had her hand up for a while. <laughs> yes. My apologies. I did not see that. <laughs> I didn't either. I, I just noticed the symbol. <laughs> it wasn't up long. I was just being a brat. Um, uh, I agree with Lindsay and us. And I went to the high tea for your cricket club, but I also went to the one that the Rotary Club did at the Agricultural Center. And I think it was Art. She runs a food bank. What's her name? Ardith. Ardith. Mm -hmm. Ardith. She has this beautiful tea collection, and she did a really great job. I'd love to um, sponsor your uh, high tea, um, but I'd love to be part of the committee or someone from this committee be on it to organize it. Just because um, I saw how how the high tea was last time, but I'd like to improve on it. That's all. Hundred percent. Hundred percent, and I, I, by all means, uh, it means I'm open to it. Uh, like no restriction from my end. Like just we want to make it better. That's all the time because last time the response was great. I know there was gaps, but this time we're gonna make it better. And so, so everyone see, hey, this is something happening, and we need to be part of it. Yes, if you can, um, definitely. I mean, I have no issues. <laughs> so maybe the two of you can uh, get together and get that. Hundred uh, percent. Decided who's doing what, and then report back to us. Agree. Yeah. Guaranteed. So, so okay. report back means Linda. We do. We need to do it through emails because I know this is the first uh, meeting, and then we have in August. Yeah, we can do it through emails for now. At least we have a heads up on what's happening. Okay. So, so twenty fourth, I think, the end of August. Twenty fourth of August is the date of Shelburne Cricket Club hosting an afternoon tea. Uh, so I don't know if we can make it. I know my event planners and partners already designed. If these can come in there is always room for improvement we can yeah. we can use it and expedite it quickly okay. okay so bella are you good with that sorry is august 24th a thursday uh, i don't know I, it was the date i think so they have that thing in mind it's going to be on saturday yeah. sundays anyways okay so, just, so just the, a heads up august 26th all the baseball teams are coming together on the fairgrounds uh, mm -hmm. For their for their thing for their gala or fair. Okay, so I, yeah. again, I, I don't remember the date. Okay, okay, no and problem. Later, I'm gonna share it with you guys. I know it is printed on our uh, Dublin County event magazine. The date okay. is already there, and people are actually sending emails to me. Oh, when is this happening? We need to come out. And I said, okay. So, so I'm gonna share that date, anyways. With you guys, I, I don't remember it. I know Myra and Nazia. They are the my Nazia is my event coordinator, so she coordinated all those things, right, in our team. So we're gonna be in touch. We will let everyone know in through email. We go from there. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Great. I'm gonna use a lot of budget, Kyle. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, you're kidding. <laughs> okay. Um. So the next item is opportunities for this term. So any other opportunities or any ideas that anybody has that they want to bring up? Kyle? Just wondering where we're at as far as the brochure that I know Chantal was working on last term for the walking trails. Do we know if that's still in the works, ready to go, or what happened with that? I thought it was done, but maybe I'm wrong. It, it was pretty close to. I don't know if it ever got finished. It was looking great. Yeah, I think for the it was for the back lanes, right? The yeah. back, yeah. That's, that's, okay. Yes. 
Right. So I think it was pretty much done, except we still have lanes we haven't named yet. So I think there was the issue there where we were trying to potentially finish naming the rest of the lanes before we went into a mass production of the flyer. That's so right. that's, yeah, that's where it's still kind of up in the air because we haven't really revisited the options for the rest of the lanes. So does anybody recall, I don't know whether Alice would know the answer, but uh, anybody recall what the cost for the other back lanes were just so we can see what dollar amount that would be in relation to the budget that we have? Yeah, that I don't know because I wasn't on the committee when they put those back lanes plaques in. Yeah, I think Jennifer knows, but I don't know whether Alice has the answer tonight. <sighs> there is a back lane brochure on the website. So I, and it looks like a completed brochure. I just put the link in chat for you. I'll put it in the minutes as well. Yeah, okay. I'm just opening it now, Alice. Looks good. My computer. So is that is that something then that we want to go into mass production or, you know, just so we have some? There, there are some printed at the office available. Okay. Alice, do you know what the cost of the, doing the back lane? Could we maybe have that information for our next meeting just so that we sort of have a sense when we decide what we want to do with the budget? And maybe which lanes still yeah, need which to lanes be which named, maybe yeah. That haven't been done and which one is the priority and so forth. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think we have very many left. I, 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 I want to say like under five, yeah. I think that we have there might only be like three that weren't finished so mm -hmm. it's not there's not a lot okay so any other uh, items before like we deal with uh, new business anything new that we want to bring forward for discussion alice has her hand up but then oh. after alice i had a question oh alice okay sorry i can't see I'll that let, <laughs> i'll let alex go first go ahead alex well, just to, to, I mean, I, I was pulling up your brochure, Alice. We, one of us has to go by a different name because he's going to get annoyed. You guys can call me Carter. How about that? <laughs> we'll go by Carter. So Alice and Carter. And I'll change my name for future meetings. But um, in the in the brochure that Alice sent, there's a modified version of the Shawburn logo. And you guys can, I know I'm beating a dead horse a little bit here. But if we can get an even more simple version of that to put on the um, uh, uh, keychains, what do you think of that, Kyle and everybody else? Because Kyle, I think you were the most concerned about the logo. I just, I really feel like if it's just text, it's it's boring. So there's there's really nothing we can do logo wise for the keychain because even that's a much simpler version. Then if we cut out half the windows, we could you know really make that work maybe. Well, that's logo. There is the Heritage Committee logo, is it not? Yeah, Ch Heritage Shelburne. Yeah, we could potentially still use it. And because it is just line drawing and very, very simple, it might work. I have to I, I on like the that. top of the lane. Like, you know, the actual lane is the one that's on the top of the lane as well. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Leave it with me. Why don't I play with it and see what I can do as far as how small those lines are going to end up? Alice, do you happen to have that logo in an EPS format or some kind of a vector format? I would have to look and check with Melissa as well. There's also the arts and culture logo as well. Which is just kind of like the swoop, the, the swoop. which is like the wind. But because we're dealing in just two colors, that could still be rather difficult for translation. Mm -hmm. I think the heritage one that we have there is probably a better option. I think it'll be a lot easier to translate. I, I agree. So what I would say, Alice, if you could, if you could locate that logo for me, if you, if possible in vector format, if not, whatever you've got, well, I'll work with it. And then what okay. I'll do is, is when I'm putting this design together, I'll give options. I'll do one that's just the, the words and one that's got that one in there as well. Okay. Um, and then what I was gonna bring up, Linda, was the mm -hmm. um, doors of Shelburne calendar. Okay. Um, that was, it's still on the town's website and we have received some submissions for the 2024 calendar. Um, not enough for a calendar yet at this point, 
Um, but I just wanted to make the committee aware of that, that that is still on the town's website. It is still okay. being advertised and we did receive a couple of submissions. Okay. Uh, do you happen to know how many submissions we had on us? Roughly? Two. Two. Well, it's better Maybe than a short door. year. <laughs> doors of Shelburne, is that what they are? Yeah, so it's, it's uh, photos of doors of Shelburne and the idea um, was to create a calendar um, ideally with a photo for each month of doors of Shelburne um, throughout the seasons. So the photo would hopefully match the season. So mm -hmm. and that started way back. Like there used to be like other uh, heritage committees that did it in the past in Toronto. So that, that's how that idea came about. Bella, were you going to say something? Um, should we encourage people to, should we remind them to submit? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> so, well, like I mean, it's, sorry. so it's like any business owners that are anything for Shelburne? Pardon? Like the photos would be anything that represents Shelburne, like a door? Yeah, a door, like, a, like mostly on the homes. Unless okay. it was a commercial building downtown that had an unusual or interesting door or like That's a nice. church you know something yeah. like that or the or the gate maybe in the in the park across from the parkette across from uh that's kind of like a doorway right sure. um, so there are a lot of interesting doors in shower i think it's a great idea yeah there is Alex, well, why don't you run around and take photos? <laughs> well I, I that's what i was thinking i mean except for the seasonal thing that's where it gets tricky because i mean we could just take a whole bunch of photos like now but then you're right it's not as much fun because you want to, it's, I agree on a calendar, it's nice to have kind of like a wintry photo in like November, December, January, yeah. February, March, because it's Canada and Shelburne. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it, it it would be fun to have seasonal pictures. That's just where it gets tricky because but then we need people taking high quality photos that we would want in a calendar all year long, right? So it's almost like we need to have these being submitted throughout the year, mm -hmm. or at least people aware that we're going to need seasonal photos throughout the year and then have an open window at some point to have them submit it. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. you can't get it. has it. been advertised since September of last year. Mm. So it was um, indicating that it's running from October the 1st last year to August 31st this year. Oh, so okay. I've just posted the link for it in the chat for you. Because what, what do we, what do, is there any kind of incentive? Like, I mean, other than it's kind of cool to get your picture in a calendar, but uh, and you know, hopefully, photo credit and all that. But is there kind of there's I don't know, yeah, all that information is there. Oh, good. good. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I didn't. I mean, I didn't know about it. Did you know about it, Bella? No. So yeah, it's too bad. <laughs> okay. Yep. But that's why we're here. We would have. Yeah, we would have. I would have gotten Jacob to do a couple of photos or something. <laughs> For me, yeah. for I know I've shared it around and things like that, you know, a couple of times for sure. But if you don't catch the post when it's posted kind of thing, you don't see it. Right. So yeah. it's yeah, it's just been challenging. Well, it's a great idea. So like, let's obviously stick with it and promote it and, you know, get to our channels and uh, maybe put a reminder on the 15th of every month. Go find a door and take a picture of it and get your friends to go take pictures, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think there's a waiver as well. Um, right, Alice? That yeah, that kind of goes with it. So um that's just the only sort of legal aspect of it is you have to make sure that you have permission from the door owner to submit yeah. the photo. So yeah, they just, just little, walk over you can just print it off. Yeah, like it's just a little form you can print off, have them, you know, sign it or whatever that says, Yeah, no problem. You can use my door picture, you know, in in a in a calendar that could be seen by you know countless number of people right so as long as they're okay with it then we're good to go and, and it can be submitted okay so i think that's everything unless there's any other new business that anybody has you want to bring up mm, no i think that's pretty much it i i just want to like i said just you know to try and use up some of this budget that will i guess expire I don't know when this budget expired. Is it January? Is that what it does it go with a calendar year or is there a fiscal year? 
those are the calendar year. So, you know, in that aspect, I mean, obviously we could always ask council to roll it over if we really want to, or at least some of it, not all of it. Um, but um, yeah, I just, if we can really hone down, maybe finishing up those back lanes, right. And then we can spend some of that budget in um, creating those um, beautiful plaques or whatever information mm -hmm. plaques. And I, I mean, I don't care if they're installed in the spring, but if we can pay for them or get them, you know, started or whatever, um, then at least that's out of that, you know, this year's budget and we can focus on yeah. some new things for next year's budget. So Alice, can you find out for us what the cost of the back lane uh, project is so we can figure out how much money that's going to cost and how I that made, factors into our budget? I made a note of that to bring forward to the next okay. meeting. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and obviously, you know, whatever ones are left to name yeah. and then, um, I guess us as a committee, we have to maybe if you could come ready in September with some ideas of, you know, what you would like to see some of these back lanes named. And then that way we can kind of throw that into the ring. And as a committee, we can say yes or no and uh, come up with some ideas where maybe we can hone it down in September. And then that way we can start the process of, um, sending out that information in order to have, uh, you know, those plaques made by December. Just yeah. You so know. if we if we had the list over the summer, I mean, some of us can pop over to the museum and yep. just say, okay, who is it important, or what building or home is important in this particular area that might be relevant to that particular lane, and then we can come prepared to make a decision. Definitely, I love that, and then that that speeds things up a little bit faster. Yeah. And then so, and I just think that we can actually get something accomplished. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal, right? Is to at least finish something by December. <laughs> okay. So if there's nothing else anybody has to discuss, um, can I get a motion for adjournment? And do we know what our next date of our meeting is? Alice, I forget now. The next one would be in September. Um, mm -hmm. And it would be September the 6th. Six, okay. September 6th. All right. Perfect. So we yeah. have to make quorum, guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we're not getting anything done. <laughs> so we have to make quorum in September in order to facilitate, you know, right. the discussion regarding the back lane, the back lanes and naming them. Right. And request for budget for 2024. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay, so can you can you have available for us on that agenda the the uh, budget proposed just so we because I can't remember what it was, um, so we have something to work with. So what your twenty twenty three budget is? Yeah, and well then we can look at it. There's money that's going to be carried over for next year, so we can kind of plan everything. Yeah, so that's your decision to determine that. Well, I know that, but but if we have the information, then we can. Okay, so I'll put the 2023 budget information on the next yeah. one again. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That that would be awesome. Great. So can I get a motion for adjournment? Oh, sorry. It looks um, like Ally Bella and, and, and Bella, Bella have hands up. Hands up. <laughs> Do you want to have a first vote? I just want to know, Lindsay, should we go to you if we want to um, sign up for the table where we hand out our keychains on the town festival thing? Shelburne Fall Festival? Yeah, yeah, like we can, um, I'm the vendor coordinator for um, the fall fair. So um, I can always chat with um, uh, the board to see if they would just sort of allow the committee to have like a spot as opposed to having to pay for a spot. Um, you know, we're nonprofit as the fall fair too. So, you know, even if we did as a committee pay, it'd be 60 bucks, right? So it's not like it would be, a lot of money out of our budget in order to have a, a table there. Um, and you know, it's going towards, you know, f the fall fair, right? It's just going to support the fall fair. So at minimum, if I can't, you know, get the table for free, then, um, you know, it's 60 bucks. Please, do we make a motion for that now? Just to get it out of the way, just in case? To prove the 60 yeah, or whatever yes. it is. Yeah, yeah, we could. We could do that if, if you know, like I said, uh, we could even word it as if we do participate in the fall fair, um, you know, we we give approval to spend 60 bucks on a vendor booth. And so you're making that motion? 
I probably should not. Oh, just oh no, I guess not. Right. No, it's a conflict. <laughs> so Alex, I, give me that one. <laughs> we, we can <laughs> we can also gonna... promote the calendar. We'll, we'll give out the keychains, promote the calendar. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. Exactly. And any brochures we have, you know, yeah, all of that. So, so Alex, you're making that motion. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Who wants to second it? Where'd Bella go? Bella, Bella's Is it weird if I second it if I'm his? Yeah. No, that's okay. You have no conflict. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> At least we're in separate windows now. <laughs> okay. All in favor? <laughs> that's scary. Okay. Can I get a motion for adjournment? Sorry, my really, really, really quick thing. So I'll oh, take sorry. my hand down. No, no, no. And then my, my last quick thing was I didn't realize we didn't have an official year that we can put on things. I actually thought it was 1844. So it's nice to know that's an address. Um, is there a way to get an official year for Shelburne somehow? Like yeah. that's not I I used to remember, I did remember because I was involved with the 125th anniversary. Yeah. I can't remember what year that was. It was when uh, Ed Cruson was mayor. Okay. Oh wow, yeah. So that's that's you've been a little while anyways. Yeah, yeah. At least almost almost ten years. So well, I mean, like our website has eighteen sixties and then town hall was built in eighteen eighty three and then Wikipedia has eighteen sixty five, I think, and then yeah. or sorry, eighteen seventy seven. Uh is that's what Wikipedia says. Yeah, but... we can also look in the history of the shop and book too. Because um, yeah, that'd so be fun that... to put that on the key like the idea is to put that on the keychain then, right? Yes, or, yeah, okay. ideal, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly the idea. Yeah, is whenever town the the town of Shelburne was identified as such, and not nineteen yeah. seventies. That's what. It's no, that, that's why I was no. like, oh, that number sucks. It's, it's <laughs> in the seventies, there was a celebration, but it wasn't was like the original date. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> finds <laughs> that date sooner rather than later, like whenever you yes. find that date, just shoot me an email. Just yeah, because okay. I started to work on May, parts, um, so. I might even just uh, quickly message Jennifer and, and ask her if she, because she's got the Rose book, and just see if she can have a quick look for us, if, if at all possible. Um, and if not, then I'll, uh, I'll try contacting Maude and, or even some of the people who, you know, are local that have been here their entire lives. They may know, like Ed Cruson, for example, may know, right? Um, so there are some local people that I could maybe lean on a little bit too to, to know just, uh, or to ask. Just as long as you're confirming that the information you're receiving is accurate in some yes, format. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 100%. Perfect. Perfect. Alex, <laughs> you done or did you have your hand up? <laughs> no, no, that was it. I, I just wanted to get a date because I didn't realize we didn't have yeah, a date. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, did someone make a motion for adjournment? Isn't it so great that Alex is getting better? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice to see him today. Yes. I, I'm, I'm still, it's hard to be on video, but anyway, that's another story. You guys are all love. It's all family. Okay. <laughs> okay, someone can make, make a motion. A motion. To, to okay. okay. I'll second it. Okay, thanks. Alex, all in favor? And we'll see you in September. So have a good, fun yeah. summer. All right. Okay. Bye, Bye guys.